Good evening, thanks for coming. Today we're gonna to go over chess tactics. All of the examples tonight are going to be about the uh, queen and bishop attacking the point king rook seven. So all these examples are taken by the chess book, The Game of Chess by Sigbert Teresch. He's a German, he contended for the world championship and he wrote his book in 1935. He didn't win the world championship, but he, he was good enough to contend for it in a match. And he was a chess amateur. He was a doctor by uh, his, that's how he made his living. Anyway, he, he made these great examples, so I've been going through these. Each week we go through different set of examples. So tonight we're gonna again go through how the queen and bishop can attack the king rook seven pawn and work through some examples like that. But our first example here, white wins. You can see that the bishop on d3 is attacking the h7 pawn, as is the queen on h3. It's white's move. White could win the pawn with queen takes pawn check or bishop takes pawn check. Also notice that the white rook that's on e1 can join the attack by moving up to e3, two squares up, and then can move over two squares to the g3 square, and that would be check on the black king. So black is in dire straits here. See how black's bishop is on a, it's a white squared bishop and it's blocked by his pawn on e6. Also notice that black has double pawns on the king side, and the pawns actually block the queen from moving over to the king side to help protect the king side. Now black's rooks are not well placed either. They're both behind pawns. So black's pieces are doing nothing. And black is pretty helpless. Now the one thing to notice that about black's king, if white takes that pawn with check, with either queen or bishop, the king can move over to one square to f8 and then can escape checkmate by moving up to e7 behind his pawns. So the question for the audience is, what's the best way for white to win the game? It's white's, white to move and win. What's the best move? What's your guess? Um, they, they block the king from the Very good. That is absolutely the correct idea. Now the threat is bishop takes pawn check and the king has to go over to the h file. We can bring the uh, bishop back, the king goes back to g8 and then the rook can come up and that would lead to checkmate. So what black tries, he tries to block the bishop line with f5. Now what's white's uh, White needs another winning move here. What's the correct move for white to continue the attack? On rook e3, I don't know. Yeah, rook to e3, absolutely right. It brings the rook up, and the threat is rook to the third, and that would be checkmate then on g7. The king moves in the corner, and the queen would move up to g7, checkmate. Now there's no good way for uh, black to get out of it. So the author had queen here, but, uh, oh, so the queen went to d4. See how it guards the checkmate square. It works back toward the black king and guards the g7 square guarding checkmate. But it doesn't do any good because with this move, White attacks the queen, and the queen can't stay on that diagonal, and it can no longer, and if the queen moves off the diagonal, then rook to g3 check, and then it's checkmate on g7. So the winning move is that last move, c3, attacking the queen. And that's, that's the end of this example. So, uh, if the queen were to go back to g7, 
to try to trade queens. Well, then rook to g3 pins the queen against the king and wins the queen. So, so that's the end of that example. This is tricky. <laughs> I will tell you that right off the bat, this is a tricky, it's, it's white to play in checkmate. But it's very tricky. Would anyone like to guess what white's winning move is? Um, um, I, from, from, F, from F5 to, um, to, G, uh, to G7, and that would be a checkmate because you would be in check and the rook, and it would be tied to rook to the rook. So knight takes pawn, and if queen takes knight, you move the rook over and pin the queen to the king, right? Yeah. You would move to e7. Oh, e7 check. That's the right move. Knight here check. Black has to do queen takes knight. Now what's the move? Oh, now. No, you're on the right track though. Just see if you can find the winning move now. There's a a great winning move to follow up with. What do you think? Queen to h5, then he has pawn takes rook. Oh, yeah. Any other ideas? Don't be afraid to sacrifice pieces in these examples. Okay, Jason, what do you think? Rook h8 check. Right. Rook h8. King takes, now you get the, see that opened the line for the queen to come in, and it got rid of the rook, which was blocking the white queen. Now the queen and bishop are attacking h7, so you drop your, the queen goes there, king goes up, and look, it's checkmate with bishop to g6 checkmate. So, that was tricky. You did good to find that knight g7 move. That, that was a difficult move to find, I thought. Okay, well, obviously white is the one attacking because his queen is on h5 near the black king. His bishop's on d3. His knight's on h5 attacking the g3 square. See how the queen and the knight, at not g3, the g6 square, the square right in front of the black king and node, and this uh, white knight on c4 is really not doing anything, so don't worry about the knight on c4. Now the rook on e1 can move into the attack along that e file. He can uh, go up all the way to e6. The pawn's protected a couple times, but it's a possibility. He can move up along the e file and maybe move over to the f file at some point. Now the white rook on a1 is not doing anything, so you can disregard that rook. Similarly, the white pawns are not in contact with black pawns, so you can disregard any pawn moves. And it's white to play and win. This is also tricky. Does anyone see a good move for white? All right, let's look at knight to g6. How about pawn takes knight, threatening pawn takes queen? What? Oh, then you would have a queen check, and you'd have queen to h7 mate. Good. All right, so we have to find something else. Knight g6, we can't take it, and you're threatening our rook. If you do knight to g6, I'm going to take my knight on d5 and retreat to f6 and attack your queen. And if you move the queen away, then I can take your knight on g6. It, it's, and you won't have queen takes pawn check. So I think knight to f6 refutes knight to g6. Does anyone have another move for white?
This is tricky, so I'll just go ahead with it. White sacrifices his rook. Now, obviously, if pawn takes rook, it frees up the g6 squared. We already looked, that's checkmate. Queen to g6 check. King to h8, queen to h7 is checkmate. So he can't do pawn takes rook. Now the other choice is knight takes rook. So what happens if knight takes rook? Well, let's, let's go on and he does knight takes rook. Now, uh, there's a strong attacking continuation for white. Does anybody see what white should do? What do you see? That's the right move. Knight to f5 check. Notice that the knight attacks the king and the knight attacks the h6 pawn, as does the white queen. So we're going to break through on the king rook file, probably with queen takes pawn check. Next move. Let's see what black does. Black just retreats. Now, it looks like we could do queen takes pawn, and that would threaten queen to knight seven checkmate. Knight takes e7 first. Yeah. Queen takes. Threatening queen to h7 checkmate, right? Yeah. I can move my pawn from f7 to f5 and block the bishop, and my queen on e7 will protect and can slide along in front of the king and protect the king from any queen checks. So uh, that's a, a good idea, but it, it, there's a defense. So knight takes bishop check isn't it. Is there a stronger move for white? Queen takes pawn is not strong enough either, I don't think, because black can move the bishop on e7 to f6 and guard the g7 square. And besides, uh, he doesn't really threaten queen to, to g7 is not checkmate anyway because the knight on e6 guards g7. So queen takes pawn isn't the move. What's the next move for white to try? Knight takes h, h6 check. See, that forces the king, if he goes, he can't go over to the, uh, well he could go over to the rook file but then we get a discovered check with our knight. That should win something for us. So he probably has to go back up to g7, which he does. Now we check and drive him back, but notice he no longer has that pawn on h6. We took it. So now the queen and the bishop are pointing to h7, but the knight's blocking it. So now knight takes bishop check wins. Something takes, and then it's queen down checkmate. Okay, now in this case, the author decides to let black win a game. <laughs> so black's bishop is on d6. See how it's hitting the pawn on h2? And the rook is on h6, attacking along the rook file. And the queen is ready to come in on h4, but temporarily it's, it, it can't do queen to h4 because the knight guards the h4 square. Anyway, all, black is attacking with rook, the knight on e4, the bishop on d6, and the queen. Who sees the winning move for black? Any guesses? Check. Sacrificing the bishop, but drawing the knight away from the h4 square. Knight takes. Now what's the winning move? Go ahead. Right. 
And if the knight moves, it's queen to h1 checkmate, right? And can white... Can't, 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 um, then go back to f3? Sure, but we can then do queen to h1. Checkmate. So there's nothing, nothing for uh, white to do. Black wins. Okay, we're back to white winning. The white bishop on d3 attacks the pawn on h7. The white queen on d1 can move to h5 at an opportune moment and attack the along the h file. The white rook is on b3, so it's been moved up three squares and can move over to the king side and join in the attack. That's called a rook lift, by the way, when you move your rook up three, two squares to the third and you want to move it over to the right side in front of the king side pawns. But the rook can't get over there right away because the two bishops are blocking the rook. <clears throat> now the white rook on king bishop on f1 is not doing anything and can't move because the black bishop guards the e1 square. So that rook on f1 is out of it. All the, the pawns aren't in contact, so there's no pawn moves for either side. So the moves are going to be by the queen, the two white bishops, and the white rook. And Black is going to try to hold his position together. Also notice that the white bishop on e3 is on a black square and has the possible move at some point, bishop to c5, attacking the black rook on f8. And the black would have to move his rook over to e8, or he would lose a rook for a bishop, which would be bad. Anyway, those are the possibilities. Uh, who in the audience would like to guess what the right move is for white? Queen to h5. It's not actually queen to h5. Um, that would threaten checkmate. Black could play g6, attack the queen, and block the bishop diagonal and stop checkmate. Any other guesses? Well, uh, I'll give you, a, a, remember I said uh, that the two bishops block the rook, right? And I said the bishop on e3 on the black square could move out of the rook's way and attack the black rook. So let's start with that move, bishop to c5. See, we gain a move we got the bishop out of the way of that rook, and we're attacking the black rook, so black has to move to e8. So we gained a move, and we got our bishop out of the way, and the bishop's on a very good square there, too. Okay, now that the, uh, the only thing preventing the rook from sliding over is the bishop on d3. Who would like to suggest a move for white? Bishop H7. Right, absolutely correct. That's a bishop sacrifice leading to the win of a game by attacking on the queen rook file, following up with the queen and the rook. So let's see what happens. King takes, queen to h5 check. The only move, rook h3 threatening queen down checkmate. He had to move the pawn up to f6 to, so the king has an escape square. There are two winning moves for white here. Who would like to guess what one of those two moves is? Let me point out that the white queen is attacking the rook on e8, that rook is only protected by the queen. Can we drive the queen away from the rook? What do you think? Oh, we can... Rook to d1. Rook to d1 is one of the winning moves. Yeah. 
If the queen, the queen can't move, so the only move is to block the attack on the queen with bishop to d7. So rook to d1, bishop to d7. The move is queen in, king to f7. Now we swing our rook to g3. See how the rook and queen attack the pawn on g7? Now, if he moves his rook on e8 to g8, see how it blocks the king from moving back to the white square g8. So if it's rook to g8 to protect the pawn, we just do queen to g6 as checkmate. Queen to g6 as checkmate. Then he can't move the pawn, we block the pawn. So he can't move the rook, No, the queen guards that square. The the only move that the author suggests is to move this pawn up. See, that gives the king an escape square. He can go, go to that white square e6 now. Well, the queen goes here, the king goes here. If he goes to g8, see how the queen and the rook are lined up and the queen can take the pawn on g7 would be checkmate. So the king has to go up here and now there's a checkmate. Who sees the checkmate move? Anybody? Rook to d6. Oh, it's not checkmate. He can move king back. And then I can take the pawn. Yep, yeah, then he takes the pawn, and that's checkmate. The king can't move anywhere. So, rook to d1. That was very good. Now, there's one other way to win, and it's a little trickier. The rook to d1, I think I might have seen rook to d1. But the trickier way is you drop your queen in. Now, you don't threaten any checkmate right away, but what you're threatening is you can move the rook up to h7 next move and threaten queen takes pawn checkmate. So let's see, what can he do then? The author says if that bishop moves to a6, threatening bishop takes rook. We don't worry about losing the rook. We play our rook to h7, threatening checkmate. So let's digress a little bit in here. Bishop here, rook here, queen here to block the checkmate. Now there's a pretty winning move for white. Does anybody see the winning move for white? H5? Yeah, right. Now, see how the queen guards the escape square from the king, and the threat is rook to h8 checkmate. The only move is to move the pawn up, and we have a couple ways to win. One is rook here, king here, and queen here is checkmate. Okay, so qu queen to g6. We just looked at the bishop to a6. Now another defense is black can try f5. It gives the king an escape square. Maybe he can go up to f6 at some point. Now the next move is for the best move for white is tricky. Remember, the white queen is attacking the black rook, so the black queen can't move away from protecting the rook. Does that suggest, can we move one of our pieces to attack with the queen, the g7 pawn? Does anybody see that move? 
Bishop to d4, threatening queen takes. Notice that queen up doesn't work because we just do bishop takes pawn, queen takes, and that leaves the rook undefended again. So the best black can do is pawn up. Now we drop the rook in and we threaten checkmate. Queen takes pawn check. Best move for black is to defend the checkmate and offer the trade of queens. Notice that the black queen left the rook undefended, but we moved our rook to h7. So if I take the black rook, the king can take our rook. That's why the queen could move up and stop the checkmate. There's a winning move, though. It's not queen takes rook check. Does anybody see the winning move? Rook takes g7. Yeah, rook takes g7. Queen takes. Queen here. King here. And now we get this important pawn. And look how naked the white king is. There are no pawns in front of the white king. And we have a bishop and queen. Now our rook's not doing much for the attack, so let's see what happens. Can that black queen move anywhere? If the queen moves to g6 to try to trade queens, we would have queen to h8 would be checkmate. Now the queen could try to drop back to g8 to defend, to try to trade queens. So let's look at that for just a second. Let's say queen here. New variation. All right, let's see queen to h5. Looks like we're getting, making excellent headway. Yeah, that's, that's excellent headway. All right, so queen to g8 doesn't do anything. Back here, the author says the best move for black is to do bishop to e6. That lets the rook out counterattacks the queen. Now, it, white can take the rook or the bishop. If he takes the rook, then black can take the bishop, and black would have two bishops against a rook, so that's probably better to take the bishop. That, now the material's even, but white is ahead with pawns. So white takes the bishop, Queen has to move up here. Queen down here, check. King to g8. Now, the queen drops back here. See how it attacks the bishop that's undefended? So the bishop retreats. Now the rook comes over, joining the attack. So I don't think I'll go any further with it. White wins, but you can see that black has three pawns. They're all isolated, and white has five pawns. White's two pawns up. Notice that they have the bishops are the same color, and the black king is open to attack. Queen to b3 check, and rook to d7, so black can't defend the position. But let's go on to the next example, because we digressed a little bit from what the author is trying to show us. This is clearly white is going to win again with, see he has his bishop on d3 and it's aiming toward that pawn on h7. Notice that the queen is on the diagonal, can go to h5 to help the bishop. Notice that the knight on f3 can move to g4 
where it attacks h7, and if bishop takes the knight, it would open up the rook file for the white rook by pawn takes bishop. That would be an extremely strong attack down the rook file against black's king position. Now, the white knight on c3 doesn't really do anything, nor does the white rook on a1. They're out of it. But the, the white bishop uh, and the queen and the knight and the rook and the pawn on h4, those are our attacking. Also, we have a pawn on e4. We can advance it one square and force the black bishop to retreat from, the black bishop's in a decent defending square on f6. So we can start off our attack with pawn to e5, forces the black bishop, and look, it blocks the white bishop on b7 behind his own pawns. If black could have done pawn takes e pawn, see it would have opened up that diagonal for the black bishop and could have forced some trade of a knight or bishop and reduced white's attack. So the starting move on this attack is e5, forcing the bishop back. Now we've reached the position where we have the sacrificial attack. Who would like to suggest the winning move for white? Well, knight to g5 isn't a bad move, but it's not, doesn't sacrifice anything, and it's not the best way to continue the attack. What do you think? Bishop takes Yes, bishop takes, king takes, now what? Knight g5. Knight g5. Now, if bishop takes, pawn takes, opens up the rook, and the queen can come up to h5 and finish black off, so he can't do bishop takes knight. Can he move his king back to g8? What does white do if he moves his king back to g8? Yeah, and what's our threat after you queen to h5? What's white's threat there? Checkmate, right? So black would be helpless. He can't go to g8. What's the only move left for black? Well, he could go to h8, but then I can move my queen to h5 check. King has to move over to g1, and I have queen to h7 checkmate. H6 or g6? H6 or g6? Let's look at h6 first. That's what the author says is best. Now, now it gets tricky. This is a difficult uh, win for white. This, who, who sees the best attacking uh, continuation for white. There's a good move for white. Does anybody see a good move? Well, he could just take it. Yeah. No, we need the knight there because the knight gives us attacks on the f7 pawn, the e6 pawn, and if our queen can get there, like queen to d3, we might threaten queen to h7 would be checkmate. So we need to keep the knight on the board. Yeah, queen to d2. See how we can take advantage of the black king position by lining our queen up on the king, threatening knight takes pawn check, which would win the queen, the black queen. And he can't do bishop takes knight because pawn takes pawn would be double check. And then we would have the rook joining the attack. And we could put our queen on d3 check. He could take the pawn. I could, it'd be all over. All right, well, let's go on. The author says the best move is to get the queen. So he give up the pawn with, White could now play knight takes pawn discovered check. The king moves back and then white could take the rook with the knight and the queen would probably take back or maybe the bishop. But the author says that that would actually, uh, white wouldn't, would run out of attacking chances after that. It would even up the material because he would have 
one, given up two pieces, but he would have gotten two pawns and a rook. Two pawns and a rook is seven points. Two pieces is six. So white might have a slight advantage, but there's a stronger continuation. He can leave that discovered check hang there for a while. So white needs to bring up more pieces to attack. So the author says the best move is just castles queenside. Now that brings the, the rook that was on a1 now is on d1 and can join the other rook in the attack. And see how black can't do anything. Black's bishop on b7 is blocked by his own pawns. His knight is undeveloped. His bishop can't, black scored bishop on e7 can't move anywhere. The queen is blocked by the bishop and the pawn on e6. And the black, that black rook is in the corner and that rook's not doing anything. So black can't really make any threats even though he's a piece up. So black tries to develop, he moves his knight over to a6. White takes his time, he moves the king over. He wanted to get the king away from this diagonal because the bishop would have an attack against the king. Again, white has plenty of time, so he's not in a hurry. Black shoves his F pawn up to block, to get some space and to block the uh, white pawns. Yep, on passant. Now, uh, rook takes, so now knight takes pawn check by white, discovered check, doesn't win the rook anymore. White shoves his pawn up to g4. Now he has two pawns. See how the pawn at g4 and h4 are one square away from attacking the black king. Notice that the black king can't escape. He can move to g6, but the queen could always go here and check him and drive him back. So not only would queen here check, king back, then we'd have queen to h7 would be checkmate. So black's king is stuck. So he tries to bring the queen over to guard some squares around the king. Now we bring the rook from d1. See how the rook and knight are attacking the pawn? The knight is attacking this pawn and this rook is attacking the pawn. And we're threatening, kind of threatening knight takes pawn. Once the knight's out of the way, we would be threatening pawn here, check, forking the king and rook. Black can't do much, so he retreats the knight. I think we could have done knight takes pawn and tried for the pawn fork I was talking about, but the author has h5. Now the bishop comes up. Now we take the pawn. Notice that we're threatening pawn to g5, check, forking the rook and king, and now we would win the rook for a pawn, so we would win the game. Yeah, the king's in check, even stronger. So the king has to retreat. Oh, now we can shove our pawn to h6. Pawn takes pawn. Oh, pawn to g5 forks the rook and the h6 pawn. Rook has to move over. Now the queen comes up, pins the rook, the threat is rook takes pawn on h6 check. The knight comes back to defend the rook and try to trade off the knight. Knight takes knight, bishop takes. Oh, okay, so we did knight takes knight. Now, he can't do queen takes knight because he needs his queen to defend the rook, you see. If queen takes knight, 
I do rook takes pawn check. This rook's pinned, so the king moves, and then I would have queen takes rook checkmate. So he has to give up his queen, and now we have our rook on e1 on the queen. We take the queen, and, that, and uh, white wins, because, uh, let's see, there's a rook, a white rook, a black rook offset. There's a knight. So black has a rook and a bishop against the queen, but white has an extra pawn and has a strong attack, so there's nothing that black can do. Oh, well, there's only one move. Let's go ahead and play it. Queen to f5. So the queen came up, and now the threat is queen to f7 check. And that would win the rook on e1, and there's no good defense for black. Oh, I mean e8, I'm sorry. The, the threat is queen to f7 check, and queen takes rook on e8, not e1. Anyway, there's more examples, but uh, usually this is a, we've gone through enough examples for now. Next week, I'll finish up the ones we didn't get.